In this video, I'm going to look at what is bankruptcy and the most common questions that my readers ask. And by the end of the video, you should have a deep understanding of what bankruptcy is and what to expect during that process. So let's get right into it. What is bankruptcy? Bankruptcy is often referred to as a fresh start. And what that usually entails is you take your assets and use those assets to pay off your debt. Uh, after a set period of time, usually one year, uh, you'll be uh, discharged um, and that means you'll be officially declared bankrupt and you won't owe any more money. Does bankruptcy include all of your debts? Well, the short answer is no. There's certain debts that aren't included in bankruptcy. Mortgages is a complicated one, which we'll get onto later in this video. Uh, rent arrears is included. So a bankruptcy would uh, write off the uh, rent arrears, so money owed uh, to your landlord, although note that this won't stop the landlord from evicting you. Um, and then there's other certain debts, things like um, student loans um, and magistrate fines, like driving offences and things like that. That's not included in bankruptcy. So, oh, subscribe. Yes, if you're enjoying this video and you want to see more videos like this, uh, ways to get out of debt and personal finance help, then hit that subscribe button. Thank you. Okay, so how do you go bankrupt? That's the big question. There are three stages to going bankrupt. So step number one is that you go to the .gov UK website and you submit an application. Now, amazingly, you have to um, pay for this and it's quite a substantial fee. It's £680, which I think is crazy given that uh, you're trying to get out of debt. Now, there are um, payment plans for this, so you can pay as little as £5 a month uh, to, to contribute towards um, that um, bankruptcy fee, bankruptcy application fee, but, and this is important, you have to get up to that £680 before you actually submit the application. So the smaller your instalments, the longer you'll be in bankruptcy. And typically the best, the best advice is that if you've decided that bankruptcy is the right route for you, then you want to execute that bankruptcy order as soon as possible. So you can get out of debt as soon as possible and start rebuilding your credit score as soon as possible. So stage two is adjudication. Adjudication means that your application has gone off and it's going to be assessed by an insolvency professional and they'll decide whether or not uh, to make you bankrupt or to accept your application to make you bankrupt. And it all sounds quite legal, but there's no need to go to court. It's all done um, electronically. Well, you'll receive some posts um, if, if you're successful in your bankruptcy uh, application. Um, if you're not successful, you will hear back from them um, and you've got an opportunity then to challenge their decision but you need to do so within 14 days. Okay, so stage number three, if you're successful, and fingers crossed you are, if you apply, then um, you'll be asked to meet a person, and that person's called a official receiver. And this is just the job title that they give to people who oversee bankruptcies. Now, in these times, it's probably going to be over the phone, which is good, um, and they'll ask questions around things like what your assets are, your pension, your income and expenditure, so how much you're earning and how much you're paying. And they'll get details like your national insurance number and things like that. Now, it's nothing to be worried about this meeting. It's not a interview per se. Uh, it's not a test. They're very factual. They're asking um, factual information so they can best execute your bankruptcy order. Can a creditor make you bankrupt? Um, well, the short answer is yes. Um, a creditor can make you bankrupt. They apply to the courts, uh, but only if you owe over £5,000. And the way that works is they'll apply to the courts and the courts will send you a statutory demand. And that statutory demand will ask for you to pay the debt or secure the debt against the property or set up instalments. Okay, yeah, big one. Um, I think one of the most searched for terms on my website is can a bailiff take your car? And understandably, with uh, bankruptcy, uh, the question is, do I get to keep hold of my stuff? 
Now, unfortunately, belongings are considered as assets when you're doing a bankruptcy order. And if, a, um, if the official receiver can sell your assets um, to make money to repay your debt, then they're within the right to do that. So the good news is certain goods aren't included in um, bankruptcy and the official receiver won't mandate that you sell those items to pay off your uh, debt. Uh, things like household, household items like clothing, bedding, um, your vacuum cleaner, things like that you can keep hold of. And um, your car, big question is about your car. Yes, uh, you can keep hold of your car, but as long as it's used for things like um, going to work or caring for an elderly relative or if you've got a, a true need for that car then they can't force you to uh, sell it. Now things like antiques and valuable uh, pieces of furniture and ornaments and uh, big TVs, uh, these are considered uh, assets that you can sell to uh, pay off your debt and you, if you go down the bankruptcy route you will be forced to do that. So if you own a home, you might be worried about can they take that away from you? And um, if you've paid towards a mortgage or you've got any money in that house, it's considered a, as an asset and the risk is that they can take that away from you. Now there's three ways that this could happen. Number one is you could be forced to sell your house to release that equity to pay off your debt. Number two is the official receiver could um, take ownership of your house and then sell it. So the first one is that you're forced to sell it. The second one is the official receiver takes ownership and then they sell it on your behalf. And then the third is um, slightly complicated where the official receiver will uh, do a court order to give them security over your home. And that, what that means is that your, your home is um, held as a security against the, uh, the monies owed. Now they've got three years to do this um, and if they don't do that then the home is yours. And just while we're on home again we'll touch on uh, renting. Um, if you are renting then any rent arrears, money owed for rent, is included in bankruptcy, that's written off, but um, you may be evicted, um, especially if there's a clause in your contract saying that you can be evicted if you're bankrupt. Uh, if you live in council or social housing, it's very unlikely that you'll be evicted. During the bankruptcy process, the official receiver will look at your incomes and outgoings. If your um, disposable income, so your income minus your outgoings, it leaves 20, uh, £20 pounds or more, then you'll be expected to contribute that money towards the bankruptcy. And then the good news is, is that most bankruptcies will end after a year. In 2018, five out of six bankruptcies um, that went through the system uh, ended up where the person didn't have to make any monthly repayments at all. But be aware that it might turn out that um, you're required to make monthly instalments. And this can actually happen for three years um, preceding the uh, end of the bankruptcy order. This is called a income payments agreement. With your bank and banking, you'll probably be forced to close down your bank account if you go through a bankruptcy process. Um, and then you're going to have to reapply to a bank that um, accepts uh, people that have been through bankruptcy. And those types of accounts are usually called basic accounts and they're very limited accounts. Um, you should check out things like uh, HSBC, a bank like HSBC, or I think the, the co-op do a, a basic cash account as well. If you go through bankruptcy, um, you're going to impact your credit rating and that, that bankruptcy will appear on your credit report for uh, six years, uh, at which point it will disappear. Um, and you'll also be put on a insolvency register, which only lasts for three months. and um, not many people would uh, look at that, so that's not something to worry about. But you should very carefully consider um, your credit rating uh, because that is a very real impact. And that's one of the reasons why we say if you've decided to go bankrupt, go bankrupt as soon as possible. Um, because the sooner you go bankrupt, the sooner you start that clock 
um, to uh, repair your credit rating and have that bankruptcy drop off your credit report. Also, very important tip and something to consider is that some professions don't actually allow you to be bankrupt. So if you're, um, if you're a lawyer or accountant um, or some positions in the government uh, and you've been bankrupt, then you actually won't be able to work. So do check that list of um, professions um, to see if uh, your work will be affected if you are bankrupt. And we've come to the end. So if you would like to see more videos like this on debt, then please subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Thank you and have a great day.